What if your data stewardship efforts could become nine times more productive than your current efforts? What if you could get instant visibility into the quality of your data as it flows into your MDM? What if your compliance-related questions about the who, what, when, and why in your data could be answered at the drop of a hat? In this multi-part series dedicated to data stewardship in Reltio, you'll see how the Reltio Connected Data Platform's intuitive and powerful user experience delights data stewards and data analysts all around the world. My entry point into the Reltio user interface could vary depending on what my end goal is. And in this demonstration, we'll cover two different scenarios. We'll start with the Reltio inbox, which is my window into all the governance tasks that have been assigned to me. From there, we'll delve into the options available to me when it comes to remediating an instance of data at a very high level of detail. I'm now in the Reltio inbox. This is my simple, no fuss window into governance workflow tasks that have been assigned to me or to the team I'm working on, allowing me to rapidly work through my to-do list with very little distraction. In this case, I can see three tasks that have been assigned to me along with their expected due dates. I have two data change requests and one match review. Clicking on a task entry opens the panel on the right with information about this particular task, including what the suggested change is in this case, and any additional comments left by the user or the process that requested the change. I can either accept or reject this change, or reassign the task. As I complete a task, it disappears and the next one pops to the top, allowing me once again to work through the details of the task. The last one is a review of a possible duplicate. Here I can see the two records in a vertical orientation, with each having different colors. I can also see the rules used to identify the match and the calculated match score. I can now perform a very detailed analysis of the possible duplicate, with the end goal of deciding whether these records are the same or not. Once I've completed my tasks in the inbox, my job is done and I can move on. Let's now drill down a level and look at the options available to me as a data steward when it comes to remediating a single record. You will see how the Reltio user interface is set up to display a tremendous amount of information in an easy to understand manner, ultimately making me way more productive as a data steward. You're now looking at what we call the profile screen. This is my window into all the details about a single instance of data that was either accessed via clicking on a record in my search results or clicking on a record from the Reltio inbox. Information about attributes, relationships, possible duplicates, and so on is laid out in various configurable panels on this screen. As data flows into Reltio, various automated data quality processes are executed on the data to further enrich it. Addresses are standardized, validated, and geocoded according to global postal standards. Phone numbers are deemed to be either valid or invalid based on country-specific pattern analysis and rules. Similarly, Emails are deemed to be valid or invalid based on industry accepted patterns and rules for emails. The data is also vetted against a series of user-defined governance rules to determine validity. For example, here we can see a warning message indicating an invalid social security number has been detected. An interesting concept here is that the data quality problems themselves exist as additional metadata that's injected into the record automatically. This data quality metadata means it's very simple for data stewards to both find any records based on specific issues and also to see exactly what problems exist on any record they're working on. Part of the overall data quality flow is the detection of duplicates. Based on user preference, Reltio can automatically combine duplicates if found or they can be presented to a user to decide, as can be seen here. In this view of the potential matches, my current profile is shown on the left side in blue, with all the attributes listed in a vertical orientation. Duplicates are listed next to it along with important metadata, such as the rules used to identify each possible candidate, whether the machine learning process also agrees on the duplicate candidate, the calculated match score for the duplicate, and the sources contributing to this record. I can very quickly perform a detailed analysis in order to determine whether I'm actually dealing with the same instance of data or not, and whether there are any additional data quality problems that I need to address. The user can choose to either merge the duplicates or elect to keep them as separate records, either for all the identified duplicates or for one at a time. This unification process results in a much richer view of data than we started with that includes a comprehensive set of relationships to claims, assets, contracts, households, organizations, and so on, all connected to our single instance of data instead of being scattered across five or six individual records, which is what we started with. 
Behind the scenes, a powerful graph technology is at work to simplify this process of connecting all our entities together. When you combine a single view of an entity with all the relationships it has across the business, you are much closer to understanding the exact scope of the relationship you have with this entity. The last piece of the puzzle is capturing how this entity is interacting with you across channels. Here we can see all the relevant interactions that have been gathered for this particular person. I can see a policy renewal, a request for roadside help, various mobile logins, a request for a quote, a mobile offer browse, and so on. By exposing unified entities, relationships, and interactions in real time, you have the foundation on which any customer experience improvement initiative can now be built. Let's switch to the topic of compliance for the remainder of the demonstration. Every action taken by a user or a system on the data is tracked. This is evident in the panel on the right, where we see the temporal view of the data. What we're currently seeing as a single record actually started out life as five separate records, with each being represented by one of the vertical lines you see here. Where the lines converge, it represents the merge operation performed at that point in time. Clicking anywhere in this order trail shows you what the data looked like at that point, allowing a user to answer any compliance-related question at the drop of a hat. This compliance theme extends down a level into the current view you're seeing. On the right side is the set of color-coded source systems, including Reltier itself, that are all contributing data into this unified record. As I hover over each source on the right side, you can see exactly which set of attributes this particular source is contributing into this unified record. For each attribute, we have a rule or a set of rules in place to determine what source system attribute value should be rendered in real time as part of what we call the operational value what you see here in the gray shaded area on the left. Here I can choose from options such as source system precedence, most recent, oldest, most frequently occurring, an aggregation of distinct values, and so on. Recall earlier, we had some data validation warnings regarding birth dates on this record. Here you can see we have a maximum values rule in place that will always render the maximum date value unless overridden by a user. This entire view of the data is rendered in real time based on these rules. In order to support the unique needs of different stakeholders who may require a different view of the same unified record, we can actually have different sets of rules in place. For example, here you can see I have a second rule set called marketing. This rule set will render an alternative view of all the attribute values to support marketing's unique needs, which for the purpose of this demonstration have been stated as wanting the most recent information about an entity at all times. Hence, you see recency being used as the rule across all attributes. This is an advanced capability that ensures you have the means of supporting the differing needs of your downstream consumers. Notice how a different view of the data is rendered in real time based on changing the rule set. One could think of this as multiple versions of the truth, which is actually quite common when you have a diverse group of downstream stakeholders who have very differing needs of the exact same unified data. What you saw in this demonstration was some of the powerful capabilities that guide data stewards toward creating a highly curated data set to meet the demands of downstream use cases relying on a unified and connected view of the data. Like what you saw in this video? Keep watching this series to see more demos of our product in action or contact us for a complimentary consultation with our team. Thanks for watching.